Hello and welcome to News Click and today we are going to talk about the novel coronavirus or COVID-19. The death toll globally has reached nearly 2,800 and at least 50 countries are reported to be affected. To talk more about this, we have with us Prabir Purkaista. Hello Prabir, thank you for joining us. So uh, the WHO has not declared it a pandemic yet, but especially over the past few days we have seen a massive increase in the number of infections in other countries and for, for the first time maybe it really looks like the spread is much, much more than, uh, and it almost seems a bit uncontrollable. So do you think we have a pandemic on our hands? Well, the danger of pandemic is far closer today mm -hmm. than earlier. China had managed to contain it right. largely within the Hubei province. Mm -hmm. Wuhan is a part of the Hubei province. And other provinces in China had shown much less number of cases. Right. And they had also brought it down quite rapidly in the rest of China two levels which were 15, 20, even sometimes as low as 10 in the last two weeks that we have been seeing. Even Hubei province numbers have come down mm -hmm. from what used to be 2,500, 3,000 to roughly about 400. So there have been huge changes. New infections a day. New infections a day. Right. And the number of recovered patients have been, of course, quite large. So this was a change China did manage to do, seemed to have been able to contain it. But now when you see the way it has spread in South Korea, Italy, and Iran, three countries where we see lots to, lots of instances. Right. This is apart from the Diamond Princess, which was one of the most botched cases mm -hmm. with Japan, the United States, and others seem to have done by deciding that they would have the quarantine within the ship. Right. And out of 3,700 people, more than 700 have already reported to be sick. Of course, now it has been that process has been abandoned. People have been shipped to their countries, locally quarantined, all of that. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting. If we take the numbers now, even now, Diamond Princess is the third largest uh, country, if you will, right. of infections. The right. first being China. Second is now South Korea. Mm -hmm. Of course, the way it's going, Iran and Italy will probably overtake it pretty quickly. Now, we have, as of yesterday, the figures that we are seeing, the number of in newly infected cases has risen very rapidly in South Korea. We now have more cases in South Korea with a much smaller population exactly. than the whole of China. Right. So if China is about 400 odd cases, we are seeing more than 550 cases in South Korea low. Mm -hmm. So that is one issue. Mm -hmm. the, but also the rate of rise has been very rapid. Right. So it does seem that it has got into the communities and it's not just one focal point of infection. The, uh, the, the one cult, Christian cult, which was thought to be the one where it started from, it's now got into a much larger set of people. Right. So that otherwise you don't get the scale of infection that we are seeing. Mm -hmm. Also the rapid rise of the infections. When we come to, for instance, Italy. Now, from what I see of the figures that roughly 200 people have been detected only yesterday. So this is again a very rapid rise mm -hmm. from 50, 60 to 80, and now we have 200. So it does seem that as more testing takes place, more cases are being uncovered. We do not know, is it the consequence of much better testing, testing a larger number of people, or it is something else that right. is really now spreading rapidly also. Right probably a combination of both. In Italy, it's the northern provinces of Italy which have been affected, and uh, Lombardy, Vento, these are the provinces, but also ne neighboring provinces. And it does seem that Milan, as a city, <coughs> is really affected. It's mm -hmm. also under almost a semi-lockdown, right. while certain other northern towns have been put under complete lockdown. Mm -hmm. It does seem now Italy is looking seriously at stopping schools, colleges, cinemas, all of these things, to what extent they'll do it, <coughs> how far they will do it are all questions. Right. But it does seem they are proceeding in the direction China did, which was lockdowns. Mm. And that's one, one immediate issue. The second is how much support do they have from the hospital system? How many beds are there? How much of intensive care facilities are available? Because that's going to be crucial as people turn very sick. Second thing is going to be after we have detected or we have the ability to detect people, I'm going to come back to that, is going to be how much facilities do we have to take care of the people who are sick. 
China built up both quarantine facilities as well as intensive care support very rapidly. And that deployment also from outside of more than 30,000 doctors, nurses, and so on into Wuhan was a mobilization which is unthinkable for most countries. Exactly. So this support is what brought the fatalities in Wuhan, uh, Hubei down. Now, how quickly others can do it is a question. Right. Third, which the WHO leader of the team, along with the Chinese leader, who did a joint uh, evaluation of all of it, also said that they use quarantine lockdowns along with what turbocharging science and technology, flexibility, changing guidelines rapidly. They changed it six times in seven weeks, treating Hubei, Wuhan differently from other provinces. So this graded approach which they had, which Dr. Aylward from WHO called the all-in government, all-in society approach, right. by which the people cooperated with the government. Mm -hmm. How others can rep rec re replicate it is the right. issue. Right. And even the WHO leadership has said, we do not know whether other countries can do what China has done, mm -hmm. because that's what they will nearly need to do in order to lock down, uh, you know, to control the epidemic. All these can be done, but can others do it? Right. We have to see South Korea, is, South Korea is at the moment mm -hmm. currently failing. Mm -hmm. The spread is really rapid. Italy, touch and go, doesn't, do, doesn't seem to be doing well. What do they now do is, is an important question. Iran, we still don't know much about really the extent. They also have exceeded more than 100 infections reported yesterday. Right. Now, Iran has an extra problem. Under sanctions, how easy it is exactly. for them to get access to yeah. medical test kits and other things. We have to see. Yeah. I think rest of the world, the position is pretty bad as well. Mm -hmm. And when you come to CDC itself, the premier organization which the world looks up to as the place to go to for infectious disease control, United States. Now, United States set out a set of kits, if you remember. And they, I think, had dispatched... Uh, X number of kits, which had so many tests they could do. Right. Numbers were insufficient. People said it's only for 15,000 people. So that's not going to be enough. But more important than that, those test kits, I think 200 of them, it was found the reagent, one of the reagents which were used was not okay, and it gave inconclusive results. Okay. So that is also the problem, mm -hmm. that even after a month of that, the CDC has not been able to actually provide kits. Right. So if this happens in the United States, for instance, and that is a possibility, mm -hmm. then the US doesn't seem to be also prepared Bad for it. Right. And if this is the condition of the United States, European Union, South Korea, mm -hmm. what is it going to happen to other countries exactly. which are less equipped right. to face all of this? And I must end with this. If we look at the map, and here is your map, mm -hmm. you can see that from South Korea, you're likely to infect mm -hmm. Southeast Asia right. as well. Right. And of course, Japan. Okay, Japan already has a large caseload because of the Diamond Princess. Mm -hmm. If we look at Italy, the European Union, right. of course, is the first target. People mm -hmm. are coming back and forth. They're also said people coming from so Latin America. There's already a case yeah, in Brazil, Brazil, for example. And there are no passport or customs controls. There's free movement of borders. In European Union, right. yes. So that is the second part of the issue, that that is the Western world hmm. can get infected from Italy. Right. And the fact that it has exploded there means that now we have a problem how to control it. Can it be controlled in Northern Italy, Italy itself, right. or will it spread to the rest of Europe? Mm -hmm. And then when you come to West Asia, Let's not forget Iran. It has bordering countries. Right. Two kinds of issues over there. You have medieval monarchies. I don't know whether they're even equipped to think about all this. And secondly, you have countries, the United States, NATO, has destroyed right. through wars, Iraq, Syria, and so on. So there is the rapid possibility. Fortunately, Iran has a strong state. Mm -hmm. So there's a possibility of that also spreading to that part of the world. And if it does, then South Asia is going to follow because, as you know, the 9 million, 8 to 9 million people of Indian origin who work in West Asia, similar numbers for, for Pakistan, uh, also Bangladesh, Bangladesh Philippines also, yeah. also Nepal, also Philippines. Right. So you are going to see then an explosion also into South Asia, a possible explosion into South Asia. Looking at all of this, 
I think at the moment, the world needs to prepare for a pandemic. Right. And every country needs to now see, do they have test kits? Do they have hospital beds? What are they going to do? Do they have people who understand what has to be done? Do we have enough masks? All of this, particularly for the medical community who are going to address this. These are all the issues which are coming up now. And as you mentioned earlier, it's also a question for the political structures itself that uh, the uh, extent of the outbreak was is being controlled to a large extent in China because of the political will of, on the one hand and also the ability to mobilize those kind of resources and deploy them at short notice, which probably almost no other country right now has. And also two other things, both of which Dr. Aylward from uh, WHO mentions. One is the fact that the people have faith in their government. Mm -hmm. So the people are told that they should wear masks, they should not go out except for uh, X number of occasions only, all of that. People not only have collaborated, they have actually imposed this discipline on others who are right, not working. Right. I see pictures in Italy, for instance, going to the supermarket, and you have half the people with masks, other half not with masks. So obviously, that kind of social ethos is not there in most other countries. This is one part, there is faith in the government. The second is China has used the traditional methods, mm -hmm. isolation, quarantine being one of that, but also been able to use artificial intelligence, contact to contact tracing, right. using social media platforms, their databases. So they have combined the 5G networks mm -hmm. to reach rural areas. They have really combined modern technology, modern science with the organization and the methods which are time tested. Right. So this combination and flexibility which they have shown, it's really also flexibility. Mm -hmm. Those kind of things are very, very difficult for most bureaucratic systems to adapt right. to. And there the leadership was in the le also led this effort. Uh, President Xi himself led the most of these efforts. That kind of leadership is almost impossible to think of in most other countries. And I think, therefore, uh, we are going to see failures of governance mm -hmm. and also the credibility of the governments right. affect the fight against uh, such a pandemic. Right. So what is the possibility? Now, our best hopes, because I think we need to also have some hopes, that A, the pandemic is coming at a time, hopefully, the influenza epidemics in the northern hemisphere, mm -hmm. because of temperature gets getting warmer, right. will have waned. If that happens, then more of hospital beds, facilities, intensive care unit facilities, identical to what the right. flu vac people, infected people, particularly the older people require, they will be available. So that is one. The health system will be better equipped at that time. Mm -hmm. The second is, and this is of course a long shot, that maybe, maybe the virus is going to turn more as it mutates and it passes through every generation right. as it mutates it is going to turn more benign. Mm -hmm. So the death rates may come back, come down, right, right. and it may be like the flu viruses right. infect us, mm -hmm. but it becomes then an infection which the body can fight. Right. Some people will die in flu viruses every year. Exactly. Tens of thousands of people die, right. but also millions of people are affected. The death rate is something like 0.1% in flu, but the numbers of people infected are really maybe 20-25% of the world's population every year right. gets a flu infa you know, influenza infection at least once a year. So those are the kind of then countervailing tendencies which may be there to see that it does not take the shape that otherwise looking at China we may expect. Right. Thank you so much, Prabir. That's all we have time for today. Keep watching News Click. Thank <laughs> you.